So normally what you see in gum pad is that you don't see tooth, right? You call it gum pad because they are alveolar process at the time of birth. But in some cases or in selected cases, you see teeth in the gum pad. So that teeth is referred to as a natal teeth and a neonatal teeth. So natal teeth is the teeth that is present at the time of birth and neonatal teeth is the teeth that is present from birth to 30 days of life. Okay, so natal tooth is the tooth that is present at the time of birth and neonatal tooth is the tooth that is present from birth to first 30 days of life. Okay, now the incidence or the incidence of certain conditions, incidence of natal and neonatal teeth is important. Like that, you also need to know the incidence of cleft lip and palate that is also important for you. So the incidence of natal tooth is one is to thousands and the incidence of a neonatal tooth is one is to 30,000. This ratio is important, okay? Now, which is the most commonly affected natal teeth is another important question for you. So which is the most commonly affected natal tooth? It is usually your mandibular incisors. That is followed by your maxillary incisors. Then comes your mandibular cuspids and finally your maxillary cuspids. So keep in mind, natal teeth is the teeth that is present at the time of birth and neonatal tooth is the tooth that is present within birth to 30 days of life. Now, the incidence is important. I know the ratio, by hurting the ratio is difficult, but you have to study the ratio of natal and neonatal tooth. So the incidence is one is to thousand for a natal teeth and for the neonatal tooth, it is one is to 30,000. And most commonly affected natal tooth is your mandibular incisors, okay? Now, now we'll see how we manage a natal teeth. Now, before management, we'll just see the etiology of a natal tooth. So what are the causes for a natal tooth? It may be either due to a superficially positioned tooth germ or it may be due to an increased rate of eruption due to some kind of febrile incident or it may be associated with infection, malnutrition or associated with syndromes. The name of these syndromes is very, very important. So in my PPT, what all things that are marked in bold or in a different color like a bold blue or a red color, all those things has been repeatedly asked in your entrance exam. Okay, so the syndrome that is associated with a natal tooth is a Ellis Van Creval syndrome. Then you have chondroectodermal dysplasia, you have Riga Fede syndrome and Hallerman Street syndrome. Okay, so this is the etiology of natal tooth. So in etiology of natal tooth, what you need to know is mainly the syndromes that is associated with natal teeth. Now, these are the four clinical classes of a natal tooth, which is given by Hebley. Okay, so as shown in the picture, you know, neat, for the NEAT exam, you need to go a little extensive than what you learned from your undergraduate days. That is why I'm including this. So there are four clinical categories of natal tooth given by Hebley. So the first one, as shown in the picture, it is a shell-shaped crown that is poorly fixed to the alveolus by a gingival tissue and absence of a root. Okay, it is a shell-shaped crown that is poorly fixed to the alveolus by the gingival tissue and there is no root present for that tooth. Now, the second classification of natal tooth is as shown in the picture, it is a solid crown, again poorly fixed to the alveolus by the gingival tissue with little or no root. Now, type 3 means you can see only the incisal margin of the crown through the gingival tissue as shown in the picture, only the incisal margin is shown. Now, type 4 means edema of the gingival tissue with an unerupted but palpable tooth. Okay, so these are the four clinical categories of a nail given by Hebley. So the first one, it is a shell-shaped crown. It is poorly fixed to the alveolus by the gingival tissue with little or no root. Second one is a solid crown, again poorly fixed to the alveolus by the gingival tissue with little or no root. Third one, as shown in the picture, it is just the eruption of the incisal margin of the crown through the gingival tissue. And fourth one, it is the edema of the gingival tissue with an unerupted but palpable tooth. So these are the four categories of natal tooth or the neonatal tooth that has been given by Hebley. Okay. Now, 
What, now, what do you see? What are the treatment options for a natural tooth? So, what do you see when you see a natural tooth? So, normally, natural teeth is the teeth of your normal dentition only. That is, it is only your primary teeth only. That is your future primary teeth because of some sort of premature eruption, it has already erupted. So, uh, normally, since it is your tooth of the normal dentition, you should always keep in mind that you should try to maintain your natural teeth. Okay, if it is not mobile, if it is not causing any other problem, you don't go for extraction of a natal tooth. Now, extraction of a natal tooth is considered only if it interferes with feeding, if it is a supernumerary tooth, or if it is having extreme mobility. Now, what is the problem with an extremely mobile tooth inside an infant? The chance of aspiration will be more. So you go for an extraction or you consider extraction of a natal tooth only if it is interfering with feeding, if it is a supernumerary tooth or if it is having extreme mobility. Right? If how, what, what do you mean by it is interfering with feeding? Sometimes because of the natal tooth, there will be ulcer in the infant lip, or it may lead to some problem, uh, or it may lead to infection or ulcer in the breast of the mother also. So that is what we mean by interfering with feeding. Okay, so you go for extraction or you consider extraction of a natal teeth only in these three conditions. Now, what is the one problem that you have to keep in mind when you are going to ex going for an extraction? So the, you are talking about an infant who is only hardly at time at the time of birth or within the first thirty days of birth, right? So will the clotting factors and all will be established? No. So because of that, you need to think about a waiting period before the extraction of your natal tooth. Now, what is that waiting period? It is 10 to 20 days. So why do you have to wait for 10 to 20 days? It is actually for the commensal flora of your intestine to form. And it has to produce the vitamin K, which is essential for prothrombin formation in liver because infants will suffer from hypoprothrombinemia. Now, uh, I think physiology is not covered for you, but without that, you tell me which are the vitamin K dependent clotting factors. What are the vitamin K dependent clotting factors you know? Yes, two, seven, nine, ten. These are the vitamin K dependent clotting factors. So, which is factor two? Which is a clotting factor two? Yes, it is prothrombin. So the problem with an infant is that at the time of birth, your vitamin K, that is vitamin K, which is essential for the prothrombin formation, is produced by the commensal flora of your intestine. But it has to get established, right? Then only it can produce vitamin K, then only it can produce your prothrombin or your clotting factor too. So as infants suffer from hypoprothrombinemia, what you have to do is that you need or you'll try, you'll plan for a waiting period of 10 to 20 days for the intestine to become established so that it will produce your vitamin K essential for the prothrombic formation, right? And in some cases, if the tooth is extremely mobile, you cannot even wait for 20 days, right? Because the child will be constantly doing that suckling thing. He'll be moving the uh, tongue and all. So what, what you can do, if it is not possible to wait, what will you do? You'll go for a vitamin K injection. So the root of it, the rate of it, very, very, very important for you. So vitamin K is administered 0.5 to 1 milligram intramuscularly to prevent hemorrhagic disease of newborn. Otherwise, what will happen? Without clotting factors, there will be excessive bleeding while you go for extraction of your natal tooth. Okay, so what you have to keep in mind, normally your natal tooth is a tooth of your primary dentition only. So what you have to do, you don't go for extraction immediately. You go for extraction only in three conditions. If it is a supernumerary, if it is excessively mobile, and if it is interfering with feeding. And also keep in mind, there is a waiting period prior to the, uh, prior to the extraction of a natal tooth. And that is about 10 to 20 days. Why, why this waiting period? That is for the commensal flora of your intestine to become established and produce vitamin K. Vitamin K is essential for the formation of clotting factors 2, 7, 9, 10. So infants will be having hypoprothrombinemia. So to avoid that, you have to go for a waiting period. 
and if it is not possible to wait you go for vitamin k injection and that is administered intramuscularly keep in mind intramuscularly and the dosage is 0.5 to 1 mg okay study it now itself and go the dosage is 0.5 to 1 mg intramuscularly okay now now what do you mean by this condition this is what i said why what i talked about that is the sublingual ulceration that is caused due to a natal tooth you can see two natal teeth is there and a huge ulcer that is seen in your where the ventral surface of your tongue and this is called a riga fede disease remember you get a lot of image based questions so this is the picture of a riga fede disease so when such an ulcer come what should be your treatment modality normally in an infant with cognitive ability you don't have to go for any treatment it will resolve on its own without any treatment now the next option you can have is you can go for smoothening of the sharp incisal edges the incisal edges you can try for smoothing then the other option you can have is you can place domes of composite resin over the tooth but how, how how practical it is is again questionable how you can place composite domes of composite resin over an atel tooth it is again questionable but that is a treatment option and ultimate cases only you go for extraction of the tooth because why because they are generally counterparts of your primary dentition only okay so this is the picture of a riga fede disease that is a sublingual ulceration which is caused due to a natal teeth okay i hope natal teeth is clear to you that portopic is clear right you need to know the incidence the tooth that is commonly involved the syndromes that are involved then how do you manage an atel tooth what is about the waiting period and the dosage of vitamin k that you have to give and about the riga fede this is so these are the things that you need to know in total about the natal and neonatal